Hi, this is Chris from Guitarist. It's Lee from Andertons. And we're here at NAMM 2015, and we're going to look at some wonderful Gibson Custom instruments with Matt from Gibson Custom, who's going to talk us through. So, go for it. Well, guys, right here, what we have is uh, Romwood L5S. And this is a new model for us for 2015. It's uh, not an exact replica of a, a L5S as it was in the 70s. Ron's made some uh, changes to it. Uh, it's an idealized version. First of all, he's, he's changed the control layout slightly to make it a little more co uh, comfortable for his playing style. Um, he's using a burst bucker two and one pickup in the, the bridge and the neck. Uh, the, he went through a bunch of our pickups and those are the ones that work best for his sound. Ebony board. And the big thing on this one is the headstock size. It doesn't have that big 70s paddle headstock. Can you take uh, it down? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's a less pole size headstock, and then that way it balances the guitars out. That was Ron's idea. He just liked the, the, the visualization of it. Um, it's still a mahogany back with a maple top, and it's got a, a five-ply neck with walnut and uh, maple on the neck. So it keeps some of the features of the original L5 uh, S and the rest of it is, is what, what's comfortable for Ron to play. Um, he's going to sign 50 of these, and That's then cool. there will be another 250 that um, will be unsigned. They'll all be a gloss guitar. So we're excited about this one. It's a cool thing to have a Rolling Stones uh, <laughs> in the family again. I can't think of um, I can't think of an iconic period when he is this. So this was a 70s. 70s. Sort of thing you when see he him a lot. This. Yeah, in the, in the early mid 70s, he played them uh, quite a bit uh, when Keith was playing the Marauder and stuff like that. So. And what was it originally designed to sort of be then? In, in the, um, just a spin off of a Les Paul or something? Is this some essentially, weird, essentially, yeah. It looks like the, it almost looks like the pickups are further apart than a like a regular bit. Les Paul. And it's it kind was, of, it was just a, a theme and variation of a of right. an Olympian design, yes. Interesting. Big, deeper cutaway as well, isn't there? It's, sure, it's a comfortable guitar to play, and it's thinner, too. Mm. I don't know if you can see with the camera if you want to get shots later, but the, the body thickness is what's really appealing to Ron. I mean, it's just easy to easy to contour and hold and get up on to play. So Ooh. another artist model that we're going to be doing this year, too, is the Brian Ray Model SG. This is a super cool guitar for Paul McCartney's guitarist. The, the big thing with this guitar is the tailpiece. It's a Vibramate Bigsby, so it'll not only come with this, but it'll come with a stop bar, so d depending on what the player wants, he can switch it out as much as he wants. It retrofits, there's no marring on the guitars, there's no extra holes. Just a really cool player's guitar, and it's one that he's been using on stage for uh, quite a while. And if it's easier to see the finish on the back, but you've got this kind of like brushed, kind of black he calls effect, it, haven't you? Brian calls it uh, Silver Fox, is okay. the finish color. It kind of has the same, uh, I guess, grain visual as, as a TV finish. I was going to say, it reminds me of the old TV models. Exactly, but That's with the black cool. and gray, it's very unique. What so, kind of pickups does he put on this? Uh, Brian's using 57 Classics. Um, and uh, d -d 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 the rest of the profile, the, the switch hat, he, he did a little bit of, of different uh, knobs from what an SG would normally use, but they look really cool with that mm. finish. So it's, it's an aesthetic, aesthetic change. Um, another artist guitar that we're doing in 2015, this is the Johnny A Standard. Now we've done Johnny A's in the past, um, but this is a standard version with a rosewood board. Again, 57 classic pickups here, and kind of Les Paul, um, I guess a nod to, to the Les Paul Standard with the cream binding and pick guard and the Heritage Cherry finish. Cool stinger on the back of it. This guitar will also come in a gold top version with the red back. It's very sharp also. Currently just with the Bigsby, um, it, we may do some with the stop tails later, but right now just with the Bigsby. So are we, are we likely to see any changes to the historic stuff for, <laughs> for the, 2015? There's a lot of really cool changes coming to historic products. Uh, we're working with uh, the plastic compositions, the polymers, we're trying to get those more accurate to the way they were in the 50s, the contours of the plastics, the contours of the metal pickup covers, uh, the, the thickness of the holly headstock veneer, high glue appointments, I mean even even the, the way the guitars are produced, uh, there, there's techni techniques used now that compromise the dish a little bit, 
of, of the guitar. The new, the new techniques we're going to use, double carving the tops, should really have that nice 50s uh, pronounced belly to the guitar that, that a lot of players desire and collectors. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the guitars, Can we see a, a prototype? Too? Yeah, the, there's a prototype, a, a concept over here that's hanging on the wall, and I can see it from this far back. See that Sorry. shoulder where the pickups are, where the lights are reflecting through? That's really pronounced. Should we, should we take up. a closer look? Yeah. That's really pronounced, and that's what we're talking about, the integrity of mm. the belly. It is just really contour in the way that the Les Paul was in the 50s. They all varied a little bit. The ones we do now are really, really close. This is just even closer. I'm kind of getting irrationally excited about the shape of the pickup covers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because I was saying earlier on, there's a there's a colleague of mine for whom uh, it's a very you know he always says, oh, they get so much right, they get so much right, but the shape of the the pickup covers isn't the same radius and it isn't quite the same. And and to see them you know as they were in the 50s is really it's really cool because it's like it's maybe that final ingredient just to make it look completely bang on. You know, it's down to the detail of in the 50s when they'd punch for the pull pieces, they always punch from the back of the cover out what that would leave on the top is a little bit of bur a burr so you would have to sand down the top to get rid of the, the rough edges of the burr when you do that it kind of uh, make, makes the pickup holes the pull piece holes a little more oval and you can see it on there how it's kind of down a little bit because they've been sand a little more we're going to be doing that to our pickups too that, that's part of the the grand design the plastic feel the edges here see how they're kind of rough yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the way they were done <coughs> in the 50s. This brings how it even you closer. Even, it's how minutiae. Do you find this, this stuff? I mean, are you, are, are you working all from original models yes, and sir. making assumptions about how they no, were made? or we, have you we got have original parts. So you've all got original and you, parts. And you, so you, you actually do, you are able to go back and, and you know, the, the bit Absolutely. where you said about the, the surrounds being punched from the back, that's because you've got the original tooling and Absolutely. you can see how it's done. Yep. Amazing. If not the original tooling, the original techniques. Um, see, that's but, we, but we're taking these specs off of original parts you yes, see that, this is a classic kind of amusing or if I find it sort of slightly amusing in, in that you would sort of go this is going to be a premium price product you know should I accept the fact that the edge of the pit guard is a little rough shouldn't I want it really smooth but of course if it's completely authentic to be That's slightly right. rough, you've got that sort of, I suppose each customer is going to have to make their mind up as to whether or not they want to go for um, a guitar with no, you know, where everything's been perfected or whether they just want to accept that this is just how it was and, and how someone was. spent an awful lot of time and energy trying to recreate that. That's right. Very even, cool. even around the headstock, the edges are, so are slightly softer. Do you feel that? Yeah, they aren't, not, they aren't sure quite I've, as sharp to, uh, to where they used to be. Yeah, yeah. Here, you can see, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I've, I mean, I've got a 58 reissue from last year. It's, it's and small I, things. And, I, and it's I'm very... not sure I've ever really done this. Yeah, right. <laughs> Snuggled up against the headstock. But... All I know is mine sounds it, great. It's very exciting, yes. Um, um, but another guitar, while we're back here in this corner that we need to talk about, is this solid formed guitar. This isn't a carved top, this is a form top. It means this piece of wood and this piece of wood are solid, they're pressed. And what that means is we can get three tops out of the same billet that we would normally get one top out of for a carved top. The other thing is, because it's not carved out, the fibers that run through the wood, their integrity is in, in, intact. They're structurally sound, so they run all the way through the top and the back of the guitar, uh, giving it a very pronounced uh, so what was volume and tone. Normal on, on arch tops back in the day, were they were they usually carved then, as opposed to formed? Oh yeah, the, you yeah, take a, a, a thick piece of wood yeah. and then you carve out the top yeah. and the back from that thick piece of wood, so you had a lot of waste. Yeah. This is a greener aspect. This is a new yeah. concept for us uh, from Custom Shop. The neck even on this guitar is now made with a production technique to where we can get two necks out of the same amount of wood that we normally would get one. Um, it's reinforced here in the weak spot of the headstock and it's reinforced down here at the heel so the neck could actually be repaired if it needed to be pulled later. It's always been difficult to do that in the past. The other really cool thing about this guitar, the mini humbucker is floating. It's mounted to this pick guard. So you only have this screw here and this attachment here holding so anything to the guitar that doesn't need to, exactly yeah. right if you remove that it would be essentially an acoustic guitar mm -hmm. and with that being said we use an end pin jack like an acoustic to not 
jeopardize the, the rim. We don't have to what, cut what another hole. This, the, this is a 17 inch form top, solid form okay. top guitar with a Venetian cutaway. So Very cool. And those are new and it's on for, for 2015. And it's really, it's, <coughs> it's really lovely exciting. in that color, isn't it? It is, it is. There's a vintage appeal with the uh, V Gibson on the headstock, which yeah. is a nice touch for a guitar like this. Massive neck, feel the neck on that. Oh, that's great. I know, that's, that's, that's completely awesome. my cup of tea. The price point's gonna be really nice on these too. They're gonna be, uh, for, for custom shop, the, the, they're going to be sitting in a, a place where a lot of people will be able to get their hands on them or they wouldn't maybe be able to get on a, a true carved top. It's, it's an exciting project. Nice. Cool. Nice. So, and yes, it seems, you know, another guitar manufacturer taking a bit of responsibility <laughs> for the environment. That's which right. Is, uh, which is always good to see. Um, cool. Well, uh, guys, I appreciate you guys stopping by. The Thank video. you very much, man. So much. Cheers. Thank Thanks a lot. Bye.